we're going to be looking at a velocity selector and its use in a mass spectrometer. We know charged particles can be deflected by both magnetic and electric fields. If we first consider this positively charged particle Q moving vertically upwards, so it, its velocity is perpendicular to a uniform magnetic field of flux density B, which is directed into the plane of the screen. If we apply Fleming's left hand rule to determine the magnetic force that would act on that charge, we take the first finger of our left hand and direct it, point it into the plane of the screen. The second finger of our left hand will be pointing vertically upwards. And so you'll see your thumb, which is representing the magnetic force, is acting to the left. And because the velocity is always perpendicular to the magnetic flux density, the force will always be perpendicular to the velocity of the charge, and so the charge will follow a circular path. If we now consider this charge Q moving perpendicular to an electric field, which is directed to the right, remember the definition of electric field strength, it's the force exerted per unit positive charge. So the direction of the electric field tells us the direction in which the electric force will act on a positive charge and so that is to the right. As the force will always be parallel to the electric field, it will not the charge will not follow a circular path but it will follow a parabolic path. A velocity selector consists of a uniform magnetic and electric fields which are at right angles to each other such that only charges moving at a certain velocity can travel through both the fields undeflected and that is when the magnetic force would be equal and opposite to the electric force. So we can say our magnetic force, which equals BQV, will equal our electric force, which is Q times electric field strength E. So for charge Q to pass straight through the velocity selector, that is to pass through the, both the magnetic and electric fields undeflected, then its velocity must equal the electric field strength divided by the magnetic flux density. It's important to note that the magnetic field and the electric field must be perpendicular to each other such that the magnetic force is in the opposite direction to the electric force. So we've seen that if the velocity of the charged particle equals E divided by B, then the magnetic force will equal the electric force. And so the resultant force on the charged particle will be zero. And so the charged particle will pass through the velocity selector undeflected. For the case when the velocity of the charged particle is greater than E divided by B, well, because of the larger velocity, the magnetic force will be larger. But the electric force will remain the same because it doesn't depend upon the velocity. So we can say then that the magnetic force is greater than the electric force. So the resultant force will be our magnetic force minus the electric force acting on the charged particle. So there'll be a net deflection to the left due to the larger magnetic force. If the velocity of the charged particle is less than E divided by B, well, the magnetic force will now be less than the electric force. So the resultant force on the charged particle will now be the electric force minus the magnetic force. 
So there'll be a net deflection to the right due to the larger electric force. A mass spectrometer makes use of electric and magnetic fields to deflect ions, charged particles, in order to identify them and to determine their abundance as well. In this velocity selector, you have a source emitting ions which are accelerated through a potential difference V into a velocity selector where only ions with a velocity V that equals E divided by B pass through the velocity selector undeflected. They then enter a uniform magnetic field of flux density B and follow a circular path. So the magnetic force on the ions will equal the centripetal force. You can see there's one V common on both sides and so can cancel. And if we rearrange the equation to make M divided by Q the subject, then that will equal B times R divided by V. If we substitute our equation for the velocity selector into here for V, then we get this. And we can tidy this up. So M divided by Q equals B squared R divided by E. As the magnetic flux density B and the electric field strength E is a constant, then we can say the mass per unit charge of our ion is directly proportional to the radius of the path it takes in the uniform magnetic field. And so the ions deflect according to their mass per unit charge. And so we can use the radius to identify what type of ions we have. So the detector of the ions is moved along the difference radii to determine which ions are present. And they can also determine the current, the number of ions arriving per unit time. And that will indicate the abundance of the ions. If the magnetic fields of the velocity selector and that causing the circular path are different, so we can say B1 and B2, then we get this. So the mass per unit charge will equal B1 times B2 times R divided by E.